requirements and of course uh, more so even with exemptions. So the states do have individual control over all of that. So with regard to the emergency health laws, while there certainly are things that need to be addressed at the federal level, no question about that, um, I think the, large, the, the higher priority for most of us and those of us who are state residents is the state law level. I think we have a better chance of getting things going at that level. And once we have things moving at that level in several states, I think we're in a much better position. We'll have some leverage and be better able to tackle things to the federal level. Uh, this is coming from somebody who's not an expert in the legislative arena, so this is my uh, thinking at this point. I'm sure that will evolve as I spend more and more time working in this arena. But um, it's a challenge. You know, I have said to people in the past that uh, I'm all, you know, anybody files a lawsuit having to do with vaccine rights, they got my uh, full support. I'll be on the sidelines cheering you know, cheering them along, but historically vaccine rights uh, related lawsuits have not been successful, just very successful at all. I really don't think litigation is, is the arena where we have the best chance of making a difference here. I think we really need to deal with it legislatively. Not that that's a piece of cake either by any means, but I really do think. And, and with litigation, it's a risk. If you lose the case, you may end up setting precedent going backwards from the direction that you want it to go. In the legislative arena, if you try to get something passed and it doesn't get passed, you can go back and try it again. You haven't really, um, you haven't gone backwards in the same way that you can if you lose a court case and get legal precedent set going the other direction from the direction that you want it to go. So it's those reasons uh, that I really feel that the legislative arena is a better place to to uh, channel our efforts with regard to uh, getting the rights that we want. It's not a place where, you know, I mean, if you had said to me 15 years ago that one day I would be an attorney or that one day I'd be active with legislation, I would have been on the ground laughing. They were both the furthest thing from my mind. But I tell you, I was compelled by the vaccine issue and went back to school and picked law school because of that. And I'm now involved in the, the legislative arena with regard to vaccine rights issues because I see a compelling need and nobody else is taking on the particular issue in, in the way that I, uh, the one that I'm focusing on. So, um, you know, uh, people like you, Clay, you see a need, you step up to the plate and my hat's off to you. And I've done the same thing uh, in doing the same thing in, in my own particular arena here. It's going to take a lot of us doing this, though, for this to to make an impact, to make a difference. If we don't take steps to try to change laws, what we're going to find out is that the minimal rights we have keep getting smaller and smaller, as they have been all along. And they're just going to get smaller and smaller and smaller. Um, it's not a question of do you want to do it. It's a question of do you want to have the rights? And if you do, then you need to be active uh, in supporting the efforts and getting involved with efforts that are aimed at uh, stopping these rights from shrinking and, and going the other direction, expanding them to something more sensible and reasonable. You know, that everything that I'm proposing here, I, I have not proposed anything that's, uh, that's unreasonable. Now, I, I've, I've got some guests coming on that uh, I need to uh, make people aware of. This is, you, you are, are, are and I appreciate you uh, uh, taking uh, coming on here a day early because uh, tomorrow we'll have on Adrian Salbucci. He's from Argentina, and they the what is happening here in America right now? He said this happened to us in Argentina. This happened to us. The IMF came in here. They depleted. They took all of our money. They uh, they instituted an austerity pro program so we could pay back all of the money they loaned us. And, and uh, you know, we've also got uh, uh, William uh, Gein coming on uh, next Monday. He's from Alipac, and uh, he's going to be telling people that exactly what I predicted would happen when over the movie Machete happened. The riots started in, in the L.A. area after this movie Machete aired. And we'll also be talking next week with... Uh, Mike Mino from the Marijuana Policy Project and uh, Dr. Jake Wade from uh, Timothy Bible College and uh, 
Governor Gary Johnson will be on on September 29th to talk about this whole marijuana initiative. You know, that was another attack on the American people, and, and, and they don't know it. They don't know that that the laws against marijuana are, are nothing. I mean, that wasn't the point. They didn't care. They, they, all they did is make marijuana illegal so they could uh, give you jail time and uh, if you if they caught you with it. But they they took our number one cash crop from America. I mean, it's like it's like oh okay, we're gonna make cotton illegal tomorrow. So so you know you're gonna have to you're gonna have to just uh, just get by with. Uh, Nylon, you know, synthetic fabrics. Right. So we we've been fighting this battle for a hundred years. They this is this is called gradualism. They they take it one step at a time. And and the conservatives and and and, and the Christians out there that are complaining about uh, Lucifer taking over, you know, are going, "Wow, well, you shouldn't be smoking marijuana. We can't we can't help you uh, uh, promote uh, smoking marijuana." It ain't about smoking it, folks. It's the most useful plant in the world, and we can't grow it. We're one of the few countries that can't grow it. Right. We've got to buy it from the Philippines. We can't grow it here. We can't have these farmers, you know, being self-sufficient and growing hemp. It's uh, you know, it, 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 it's so widespread. Uh, J. Edgar Hoover said. You know that the average a person is is just stunned and into uh, uh, when he when he comes face to face with a conspiracy so vast they just can't believe it's uh, it's real. They can't believe it's real. And and everything that you've said on this show, everything you know that's happening with these vaccines, uh, setting us up. You know, they created the, the disease. They're creating the disease that they're supposedly trying to save us over. Well, there's, as you know, some real um, interesting evidence to suggest that. I just recently put together what I call a swine flu review. It's a report where I summarize the problems with this uh, pandemic. It's a good information piece just for an overview of the pandemic. That's also something that uh, I put together to be useful as a tool, something that you can take to state representatives or take with you when you go talk to a state representative or anyone else that you, you know, it's important to communicate to them this information, what's going on. I mean, let me give you, if I can, just one more example, because this one was sort of interesting. And this is one I hadn't heard anywhere else. Uh, it's dumped long when I was putting together the information on this report. I'm going to just mention some quick statistics for three different countries as a comparison, the U.S., uh, the U.K., and Poland. The U.S. reportedly vaccinated about 30% of its population. According to um, one uh, website that kept statistics for uh, the death rate from the swine flu around the world, uh, the figure they came up with in the U.S., the U.S. had something like eight times its proportional share in terms of our population. We have like 5% of the world's population approximately. We had something like eight times our proportional share of swine flu deaths. And you might say, well, okay, that's just because the reporting in third world countries isn't very good. We didn't really have that much. That's just, you know, a byproduct of the information they had available. But listen up for the next couple of, of stats here. 30% of the population vaccinated, eight times our proportional share of flu deaths. In the UK, they vaccinated reportedly about 8% of their population, about a fourth of the percentage of population that the US did. And figures in the UK for swine flu deaths so that they had two times their proportional share of swine flu deaths. They had about one fourth the percentage that the U.S. did, and they had about one-fourth proportional share that, that the USA did. The USA had eight times, the U.K. still had twice the proportional share. And Poland, on the other hand, didn't vaccinate at all. They refused swine flu vaccines. They had about a tenth of their proportional share of uh, the world, reported world swine flu deaths. 
there seem to be now. I only looked at these three countries just because they were representative of uh, of uh, different percentages.